Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I want to take this opportunity to, uh, one, say thank you to the citizens of our community, to the peaceful protesters and organizers on, uh, from last night, to our chief, uh, Gina Hawkins, and the entire Fayetteville Police Department, and to all of the citizens of this great city of Fayetteville. Thank you uh, for putting on display for the world to see the true image of who we are in the city of Fayetteville. Uh, last night, we had a, a wonderful night of expression and unity, uh, and that was only possible because of uh, those law-abiding protesters that chose to come out to respect the rule of law, to respect uh, the boundaries and the, the areas of, of expression uh, that they were given by a police department. And it was possible because we had a police department who understands and empathizes with the pleas and the cries of this community and the citizens uh, who are expressing themselves in a number of ways for change. And I think that's where real change starts, that our plan going forward is to continue dialogue uh, with our community leaders, with the organizers of this protest, the peaceful protest, uh, to continue to have a conversation about real change here in the city of Fayetteville and how we can work together to make sure that our system of government works for everyone. And we've worked hard in this community over the last several years to build those type of bonds and relationships that were on full display last night. And so I wanted to first say thank you for that. And I'll, secondly, I would like to ask our future protest organizers to continue in the good spirit of, of law-abiding peaceful protests that realize that injury to person or to property is not the way to have your causes heard. And I would also like to thank the citizens of this city for complying with the curfew orders. The last two nights have been very peaceful. Uh, our police officers and first responders were able to do their job. And we thank you for abiding by that curfew and to remain uh, at home. And just to remind everyone that the curfew is still in effect. Uh, it goes from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. and it will remain in effect until revoked. And we ask that you please continue to bear with us and only move about uh, if absolutely necessary. But also like to remind you that the downtown areas uh, will continue to be restricted starting at 5 p.m. So we ask that you would please, if you uh, do not have to travel in that area after 5 p.m. Uh, to please uh, abide by those restrictions that have, that have been in place uh, for personal safety and for property protection. You know, we're very fortunate in this community um, as I look around, a number of communities who are dealing with officers that have been injured. Uh, St. Louis had a number of officers shot, in my understanding. Uh, Raleigh have a number of officers in the police department. And so far, thanks uh, be to God that we have not had any injury to our first responders, our brave men and women uh, who put their life on the line day in and day out to protect the citizens of this city. Uh, we have not had any significant injury to protesters or citizens uh, who are operating their constitutional right of expression in a lawful manner. Uh, but we have also shown that we will continue to maintain order in our city and our community for those who have other intentions who want to try to hijack this noble cause of change for their own agenda. And so we will continue to deal with those uh, perpetrators of those actions. So at this time, I will ask that uh, Chief Hill would come and give us a briefing as it relates to uh, the fire department and their role in, in this. Uh, good morning, uh, Mike Hill, Fire Chief, City of Fayetteville. Um, happy to report that we sustained no firefighter injuries to this point. We've had no damage to any of our equipment or our facilities. And a key point is we've experienced very minimal fire damage throughout this event throughout the entire city. Um, our fire damage has been contained to a few dumpsters and trash cans, one ATM machine, and the minor damage that was done at the market house by fire. Our response has been very well planned and, and strategic in, in nature. We have extra resources we've brought in to, to keep the, the citizens safe. Um, I do want to touch real quick on our response to the market house. I know it's drawn a lot of criticism, understandably, but please, I want everyone to be aware this was, this was planned. It was very well thought out. We brought in extra units. We had them staged in the downtown area. We had evaluated the building. We knew the structure type. We had removed the fire load out of the building, and we knew it had a, a very well operating sprinkler system. And we were in constant surveillance. Uh, we were confident that the tactics that were being used by the protesters 
wasn't going to result in the catastrophic destruction that was desired. Now, once we noticed that those tactics shift, that's when we reached out to our partners at the police department and said, hey, now's time we need to take action. And we did, and it worked out very well. But please understand that our firefighters have no way to protect themselves in these violent environments, and we are relying upon our law enforcement partners to keep us safe, and they've done an excellent job with that thus far. So, end of my statement, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, maybe we'll take questions at the end. Okay, too, I'm sorry. You can stand by. So, at this time, we would have uh, Chief Gina Hawkins, Fayetteville Police Department. So, good morning. Um, I think I've already shared um, this long weekend what we've been dealing with, um, the ability for people to share in their protests on Saturday. Um, we had some threats to the community that we were evaluating on Sunday. And then yesterday was another day that um, was a lot of information coming to our community and, and a lot of things were being evaluated at the same time. So in taking all that, what ended it was a walking protest but the protesters didn't realize that we had established um, um, a restriction coming into the city. But once we communicated to that, we, it became a little volatile, um, and there was an arrest um, when they could not pass a certain point to come into the downtown area. Um, we also realized that that energy continued. Um, we got to a point where it increased, and it was a stand. It was a stand. But I want to tell this part of the story. I share how we in law enforcement work hard in the city of Fayetteville to do what this sign behind me says. We're one agency, one community, one family. We do that because we are part of the community. We do that by getting engaged with the community, living in the community, having relationships, building true relationships with the community. Last night, one of my officers who were on the line knew a few people that were in the crowd. This officer was communicating, not me, although I was communicating with some members of, at the scene um, that were leading it, and although my commanders out there were um, discussing to identify, my officer from the patrol was communicating to another person in the crowd from the line. So when I say it's not just one person, it takes a lot. This officer was requested to just take a knee. He took it up the chain. Can we do this? Absolutely. We've been wanting to share that we are in solidarity with the community a long time ago. We shared when I communicated on Thursday of last week after the incident how appalled and how this was not us and this was not law enforcement. What occurred to um, George Floyd how we knew everything was wrong about that and how we understand what's going on in the community. We have been wanting to march with the community ourselves, but at the same time, we are required to maintain order and keep people safe. So when that request came up and when it was done, when I tell you the energy from both sides, the tears from both sides, my officers heart filled, my room where we were monitoring it, engaging it, the energy in that room, what we felt is priceless. It's what it's about. And we know it doesn't stop yesterday. We know it's one day we make a conversation to hear the unheard, to listen, to explain, to educate, and to empower everyone to be treated with respect everyone to be treated fairly. And law and order to be protecting our community doesn't take just the police department. It takes the entire community to establish the guidelines. And that's what we're here about. So I can't be more prouder of the community and can't be more prouder of my department and my officers showing how real community policing looks like in the time when it's rough. That's all I have, ma'am. So I think before we open up for uh, just a few questions, uh, I'd like to thank uh, members uh, on the state level. Uh, Governor Cooper's office, he, he calls and checks in uh, regularly, called uh, just about uh, every morning just to see how we're doing, what we need as far as resources. So thank you 
for that support. I also received a call yesterday from Senate President uh, Phil Berger. Uh, he called just to uh, express his gratitude and to have me to express to Chief Hawkins and our entire city staff and leadership uh, that uh, he was very impressed with the way that we've helped uh, dealt with the situation uh, in the city of Fayetteville. And so right now is a pivotal moment for all of us to set aside politics and, and partisanship uh, and let's, let's make real change in this community. And I think we can start that right here. So uh, with that, I guess we'll open up to any, any questions that we have. Yeah, Chief, can I have Chief back up? Chief Hill, you want to come close by yeah. if you need to? Yes, Mr. So, Barnes. Um, I guess two things. First of all, talk about um, your experience in working in a big city like Atlanta. Yeah. And because of that experience, you knowing probably what needs to be done when yeah. you have large protests and what does not need to be done. And did you draw on that uh, experience in order to make decisions here? Yes. Yeah. So, yes, over 32 years of law enforcement experience. In Atlanta, I've been part of the line. I've also been part of um, at least six major riot protests, six major incidents where things are occurring. I've been a part of incidents where we've made bad decisions and tactics in law enforcement, where we've had to learn it. I've made, been a part of a, each year, each incident, we progress and get experience and learn different things that benefits both sides, the community and law enforcement. And the last one was there, similar to this one where there was the possibility and same strategies were resulted that were used is what I applied. Knowing the decisions have to be made, not just with, with one element, there are many things that are evaluated, many discussions, many options to understand what is the best strategy to have the best outcome for first preservation of life and then keeping the community safe with the property. It's many, many things, but definitely a lot of experience. And just to follow up, uh, the, the major part of the, the problem with, I think, um, George Floyd was the fact that the officers had the opportunity to de-escalate that situation before yes. it got to the point where the, in, the, the individual was on the ground and the knee was applied. Okay. Talk about your training in terms of the, uh, the escalating situations here in the Fayetteville area. So in Fayetteville, we have extensive training, and, and it's not just one box training. We continue not only to train on de-escalation, where it be crisis intervention, um, different levels of, of training of de-escalations. De um, we, we know it involves communications, it involves more people, strategy, evaluating. The other thing it involves is assessing the situation, not operating on emotions, because emotions get us all making bad decisions, operating on practicing new training, and we're always researching more training to do. So my department has had extensive training and we continue to look for more. Most, most importantly, we talk to each other, we communicate, because we know the first, the first thing is being communicated to the community is this uniform. That in itself sends, a, sends some idea and we don't know what your thought is. Is it good or positive? So the effort of trying to make sure it, there's a good outcome is part of that. So we have, the department continues to train and we look for, we're always looking for more training. Chief Hawkins, what's your reaction to, I've talked to several officers who felt like their hands were tied Saturday night, they were seeing all the destru <coughs> destruction happening and they couldn't step in um, and they were just frustrated with how that was handled. What's mm -hmm. your reaction to that? And then if I can get your reaction as well to the video of the officer hugging the, the protester hugging the officer last night after um, Everyone uh, was leaving, the crowd was leaving. Uh, yeah. Saw that. Yeah, I, yeah, I actually shared them. So, um, I, and I actually pushed it to that actual officer. And same effort, same, same as the rest. This is who we are in that effort. And to response to, I think you said, a officer, is the same response that I give to the community. I empathize and understand that feeling of not knowing the full picture, not being able to understand in your silo what's going on, the um, all-encompassing issues that are going abroad. I understand when you don't know all of that, that's how you may feel. That's why there is a command and a decision maker of evaluating different things. So I understand that, but I have a different perspective and make my decisions based off of many, many op operational issues. So, any, any idea how long the curfew will continue and the downtown will be partially shut off? 
Uh, good question. I, you know, I rely heavily on the decisions of these professional public safety um, professionals. And so curfew will remain in effect until the chief uh, assesses the situation and, and thinks it is no longer necessary. You know, last thing I want to do after two months of being restricted with stay-at-home orders and curfews is to put another one back out there. But at the end of the day, I think we've seen the impact that it has, the immediate implementation of the curfew and the results of, si of peace the following day. So um, we'll, keep it, we'll keep it out there as, as much as possible. As it relates to the restriction on downtown, same thing. When, when, when they assess the situation and tell me that it's time to no longer restrict downtown, then I think that we will uh, make those adjustments, the city council and I. Talk specifically about the, the restrictions. I know there's cinder blocks blocking off certain streets. What, can you talk about that? Well, I'll, I'll let her talk about the logistics of it. It's just basically uh, restriction on access, you know, vehicle access, and, and we're really pretty much downtown is the heart of the business district. Um, you know, we know business hours fluctuate, but for the most part, uh, we try to be as least uh, impact, impactful on the businesses to allow that operation, but after five, we'll need to restrict that. So I'll let Chief talk about the particulars. So the restriction also enables us to be able to continue to patrol the rest of the city. I've said this before, the downtown area is not the entire city. We have responsibility of communities, of other areas. So when we don't have to have a threat to the downtown area, which we've had, um, we're able to deploy other resources outside and continue um, patrolling. So. To answer your question. Yes. Is the National Guard still here? Some are. That's it. All right. Thank you for your time. <laughs>